Hi, welcome to Thiro Academy. Today we are going to discuss about Spring Boot Embedded Servers. In general, before going to Spring Boot in Spring or else in any other web applications, we are going to build as uh, application, we are going to build as jar or var file and that jar or var file we are going to deploy in external ser web servers. But in Spring Boot, we have oh, built-in servers available. Sorry, uh, let's see now. Understanding embedded servers, built-in servers. Okay, Spring Boot applications come with web server embedded within the application itself. Eliminating the need to install and configure a separate server externally. No need to install external server separately. Okay. Uh, along with the Spring Boot application, built-in server is available and convenient deployment. You can package and deploy your application as a single jar or var file, making it more portable and self-contained. Okay, convenient deployment is available. Simplified configuration. Spring Boot automatically configures the embedded server with the sensible defaults. Reducing the amount of manual setup required. There is no need to require manual setup is not required in Spring Boot applications. Built-in embedded servers available. Because of that, no need of external server. Okay. The next, Spring Boot supported servers. Which type of, uh, what type of server, uh, servers Spring Boot application will support is Tomcat server it is uh, supporting and Tomcat is by default. Jetty it is supporting and Undertow also Spring Boot supporting. Tomcat is the default choice known for its stability and wide adoption. We know Tomcat server very well, right? That's why it is the default choice in Spring Boot applications. If you want to configure Jetty server, you can do easily. Okay. Known for its lightweight and high performance characteristics. This is high performance server, Jetty is. Okay, Undertow. A newer server designed for high throughput and low memory footprint. Okay, three types of servers Spring Boot is supporting. Okay, we'll change the server in Spring Boot application and we'll see. Okay. Uh, how to identify default server included in Spring Boot application. Uh, before going to see, we will see the execution of the Spring Boot application. Okay. How to change the server also, we will see. This is the simple Spring Boot application. Uh, here we have only one get request method. This is the Server controller. This application, Spring Boot servers. This is the application name I have prepared. Uh, sorry, I have provided. In this palm.xml, I have included only Spring Boot starter web dependency. Other than that, nothing is there. Okay. This is the test dependency. This is the Maven plugin. Okay. See, now I will run this application and we will see. Sorry, here. Running as, run as Spring Boot application. See, server is running. Here I have provided port 9090. See, I have provided that via ML file here. Application.ml file I have provided. In that server port I have provided as 9090. Okay. Server is running and upright. I uh, will run this one. See, welcome to Thiru Academy. Get request we have sent. See here. Just port number. Then we need to provide slash. I have provided same way. We are getting the output like welcome to Thiru Academy. Same right? Yes. Now we will change the server. See. This is the web dependency right? Here we need to provide exclusion. Okay. Exclusions under that exclusion we need to give. In that we need to provide that 
dependency what we need to exclude we need to provide group id and artifact id we need to provide for that here i am providing group id org dot spring boot uh, spring framework dot boot and artifact id here we need to provide tomcat right i am removing web and providing tomcat okay i have saved i am stopping this server i am running again we'll see how it will work see here if you observe here see there is no active profile set that means no server is available we need to provide server here application is okay but to run that application we need to provide server right there is no server here for that we need to provide server okay for that dependency we need to provide see dependency under the dependency we need to give oh sorry not here here we need to provide instead of tomcat i am providing jetty no jetty we'll see yeah here this is the spring boot technical starters okay yeah jetty will provide i'm sorry yeah see i'm copying this and i'm providing here instead of this okay fine i'm saving and i'm running this application once again yeah observe here jetty started on port 9090 okay we'll send the request once again see it is coming right welcome to thiru academy okay yeah how to change the server we have seen right next same way if you want to use other undertow server we can change it in same manner okay the coming to next how to identify the default server included in our spring boot application one is dependency hierarchy of pom.xml file yeah see now, now we have included that jetty server right see dependency hierarchy in dependency hierarchy web spring boot starter web is there okay under that spring boot starter is there json spring web web mvc see spring boot starter jetty is available they are right so it is included the uh, jetty server okay like this we can check and one more thing in pom.xml file spring boot starter web is present without any exclusions okay tomcat is included if you observe here in pom.xml see here uh, web star, spring boot starter web dependency is available here if it is provided with any without any exclusions okay by default tomcat is available next application logs if you observe here here jetty server jetty started like that it is providing right so same way if we have tomcat tomcat started like some messages it will print right see this is a server jetty web server okay like that we can identify jetty server handler like that we can identify in application logs effective pom see effective pom also tomcat is available sorry jetty right see jetty version is included spring initializer 
if we create spring boot project choosing spring web dependency automatically includes the tomcat server okay see now we will do one thing here i am removing the jetty dependency i have removed okay i am restarting the application the next spring boot application we'll see now how server it is showing okay in browser i'm sending request it is not displaying any message why because it is, uh, there is no server available right uh, see here in dependency hierarchy spring boot starter see web is there web mvc no right any server related uh, server related jar is not presented right uh, yeah like this we can observe which type of server is available we'll do now one thing in palm.xml we'll remove the exclusions also control s i'm running the application once again see now starter right tomcat see tomcat started on port 9090 i'll refresh this request yeah we got the output welcome to zero academy and one more thing we, we need to observe right uh, tomcat related jar see spring boot starter tomcat is available previously we will see jetty server now tomcat we are seeing same way we can observe in effective palm logs as well as okay in this way we can observe which type of server is available in spring boot application the next thank you if you really like this video please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you thank you for watching